Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Kiri Vardhari Jaya Gopi Janavala Bha Kiri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Randana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Randana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Panachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bad Padamahansa, Purjika Charja Astota, the Rishi Srimad of Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan BBT founder of Charja, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Padamahansa, Purjika Charja Astota, the Rishi Srimad of Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Niki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Sama Veda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Goranga. Okay, I think we're on 16. Can you sit check? Because you were here yesterday, weren't you? I think it's 15. 15? I don't think so. Oh, maybe. I think we did that. Sarbindi Gunabasa, Sarbindi and Diva Vajitam. Okay, now we'll go 15. You may be right. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 27th day of May, 2020, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 13, Nature, the Enjoyer, and Consciousness. Text number 15, page 545 on this particular printing. Sarvendriya Gunabhasam Sarvendriya Vibharjitam Asaktam sarva bhrichayva Nyugunam guna bhaktracha Sarvindriya guna basam Sarvindriya vivarjitam Asaktam sarva bhrichayva Nyugunam guna bhaktracha Sarvindriya guna basam Sarvindriya vivarjitam Asaktam, excuse me, Asaktam sarva bhrichayva Nyugunam guna bhoktracha Go ahead, Makanda. Sarvindriya guna basam Sarvindriya vivarjitam Asaktam sarva bhrichayva 
Nirgunam Gunabhoktracha. Sarva of all, oh, excuse me, Sarva. All right, I'll read it, you can just read along. Sarva of all Indriya senses, Guna of the qualities, Abhasam, the original source. Sarva all Indriya senses, Vivarjitam, being without. Asaktam, without attachment. Sarva Brit, the maintainer of everyone. Cha also, Eva certainly. Nirgunam, without material qualities. Guna Bhotra, master of the Gunas. Cha also. Translation. The super soul is the original source of all senses, yet he is without senses. He is unattached, although he is the maintainer of all living beings. He transcends the modes of nature, and at the same time, he is the master of all the modes of material nature. Purport. The Supreme Lord, although the source of all the senses of the living entities, doesn't have material senses like they have. Actually, the individual souls have spiritual senses, but in conditioned life, they, the senses, are covered with the material elements, and therefore the sense activities are exhibited through matter. The Supreme Lord's senses are not so covered. His senses are transcendental and are therefore called nirguna. Guna means the material modes, but his senses are without material covering. It should be understood that his senses are not exactly like ours. Although he is the source of all our sensory activities, he has his transcendental senses, which are uncontaminated. This is very nicely explained in the Shvetashvatara Upanishad, 319, in the verse beginning, Apanipado Javano Grahita. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no hands which are materially contaminated, but he has his hands and accepts whatever sacrifice is offered to him. That is the distinction between the conditioned soul and the super soul. He has no material eyes, but he has eyes. Otherwise, how could he see? He sees everything, past, present, and future. He lives within the heart of the living being, and he knows what we have done in the past, what we are doing now, and what is awaiting us in the future. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. He knows everything, but no one knows him. It is stated that the Supreme Lord has no legs like us, but he can travel throughout space because he has spiritual legs. In other words, the Lord is not impersonal. He has his eyes, legs, hands, and everything else. And because we are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, we also have these things. But his hands, legs, eyes, and senses are, are not contaminated by material nature. The Bhagavad Gita confirms that when the Lord appears, he appears as he is by his internal potency. He is not contaminated by the material energy, because he is the Lord of material energy. In the Vedic literature, we find that his whole embodiment is spiritual. He has his eternal form, called Satchit Ananda Vigraha. He is full of all opulence. He is the proprietor of all wealth and the owner of all energy. He is the most intelligent and is full of knowledge. These are some of the symptoms of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the maintainer of all living entities and the witness of all activity. As far as we can understand from the Vedic literature, the Supreme Lord is always transcendental. Although we do not see his, ha his head, face, hands, or legs, he has them. And when we are elevated to the transcendental situation, we can see the Lord's form. Due to materially contaminated senses, we cannot see his form. Therefore, the impersonalists who are still materially affected cannot understand the personality of Godhead. <coughs> Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmiratam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Shri Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Shri Parampara. So, a little meditation on the apparently contradictory or paradoxical qualities of the super soul. Uh, Prabhupada mentions at the beginning of his introduction and even in the title page of this book that the Bhagavad Gita is often called the Gita Upanishad because it's uh, kind of a summary of all the knowledge in the Upanishads. And sometimes it, sa it sounds a little more Upanishadic than at other times and this is one of those verses and the purport echoes that. So, uh, 
the Svubusol is the original source of all senses, yet he's without senses. So normally when something is a source of something, it possesses those things. Um, but here, he's the source of all senses, meaning material senses, but he's, uh, he's without senses. He's without any material senses, but he has spiritual senses. He's unattached, although he is the maintainer of all living beings. In our conditioned state, when we maintain something, just like a father maintains his family, he becomes very attached to what he's maintaining. Uh, in fact, he's attached beforehand. That's why he maintains. I mean, it, 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 they play off each other. When you are able to maintain, then you become more attached. But Krishna is completely unattached, unatta although he's maintaining everything. He transcends the modes of nature, and at the same time, he's the master of all the modes of material nature. So this Nirguna word comes up in the purport. Nirguna uh, sometimes is taken to be without qualities, but it's the same idea as that he's without material qualities, but he has uh, unlimited spiritual qualities. So let's see. Uh, so the whole, the, the whole theme here is that the super soul uh, is all-pervading. He knows everything. He is... Uh, providing us, this is explained later, he's providing us with intelligence and how to do everything. And at the same time, he's also instructing us. Prabhupada said one time, and this is kind of intuitive, that the, the, the conscience, the, the, there's, a, there's a very nice purport in the second canto, a famous purport, with a little use of the intelligence, we can understand the presence of the super soul. I don't know if you recall that purport. Uh, we'll read it sometime, I should have brought it with me. Yeah, this one has this. It might not be better, but I think it is. There is There's more interference. Uh, so here, uh, Prabhupada quotes this uh, with a little use of the intelligence, which is supplied by the super soul. If you meditate and you, you, you go through this argument, then you can understand there's, there's someone who's giving me the intelligence. It's like if you... You know, you lose your key car keys or something, you know, classic. So you dredge your memory, you're going here, you're going there, you know, and suddenly, you say, oh, now I remember it, I, I left it on the kitchen table. You know what I mean? So where did that come from? It's almost like that effort to mem remember is a kind of a prayer, and then it comes to you from a higher source. This is what is described in this purport, you know. And Indeed, the super soul, uh, he knows everything we've done. He knows our whole karmic record. He knows what we're doing now. Uh, but he's not, he, he takes the role, for the conditioned soul, of more or less, he's not involved. In other words, the, 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 the conditioned soul is playing out his karma. The super soul is giving him uh, intelligence to do it. Uh, but as soon as that soul has some... Uh, what should I say, divine inspiration to look for God or something like that, then the super soul tries to direct him. He takes a role in trying, trying to direct him in the right way and give him good advice. Uh, unfortunately, we're so covered over, we can't take it directly. And so it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that that super soul appears externally as the preceptor, and not just one, there's the, so many shiksha gurus that come, sadhus, uh, and the shastra, the actual genuine shastra. Uh, the problem is for so many years, you know, if the if society is so dark and so in the modes of nature, then those elements, they may be here or there in the society, but, they, but there's no receptivity. And, uh, the, you know, the darkness continues until there's a, a power, powerful uh, preacher who can, you know, especially, of course, with, you know, Lord Chaitanya's movement, spread the chanting of the holy name, which opens up the receptivity of anyone who takes it seriously, even a little bit, and the knowledge can start flowing from the super soul, the guidance. And that's what Prabhupada did. Each of these books that he wrote, whether, the, you know, these uh, substantial shastra like the Gita, the Bhag Bhagavatam, or these other books that were put together from his lectures, you know, they're all absolute. And they all can uh, strike into the deepest you know, heart of the reader or hearer and waken up that, <coughs> awaken that <coughs> uh, divine impulse, you know, to search out uh, genuine uh, uh, spiritual knowledge. So that's, you know, so here we're reading what, what the na actual nature of that super soul is. Apani paro javano grihita. So Prabhupada gives a partial translation here. He, he has no feet or has no legs, 
but he can run, go anywhere. The other one is he has no hands, but he can grasp anything. Javano grihita. Pandipado javano grihita. The other part is it uh, a chakshu. He sees everything, but he has no eyes, you know, like that. So he has no material eyes, but he can see everything with his spiritual eyes. Um, has no hands, but he can grasp everything. Okay. So it's interesting. I remember when <laughs> this thing with, uh, I always forget his name, uh, Snowden, the guy who, who blew the whistle on the, the, the NSA is hearing everything, you know, recording everything. Uh, there were various stories, and one thing that came out was this concept of the panopticon. Did you ever hear that? The panopticon, as it, if you analyze it, means something that sees everything. This was a this was some kind of, I think it was a, a some fantasy story, you know. But there was an illustration there, and they had uh, people, the, the prisoners. There's a prisoner, but in the central uh, well of this prison, there's this big tower, and they're looking into all the prison, you know, uh, cells, and no one could do anything, you know. Like <laughs> but that's exactly the the the, the demons are trying to be the super soul. They want to hear everything you're doing, see everything you're doing, uh, and if you go out of line immediately, you know, arrest you, or whatever. Um, so why is, that, why is that such a frightening uh, concept? Because you don't have the faith that they really have your best interest at heart. You know that they're, they're fallible, they could become corrupted, we've had it with, you know, the Stalin and all of this stuff, and communism. So therefore, that's why you have you know the uh, supposed uh, protections of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. You can't get without proper uh, what is it? That's, yeah, warrant or a uh, probable cause. You can't just stop someone and say I mean, start frisking them, you know, unless there's some reason to suspect them or something. To try to protect their privacy, you know. So, but uh, the fact is that the super soul is this panopticon. He sees everything, all our thoughts. It's right in the introduction. I remember reading that many years ago, uh, that the super soul is there and he's seeing everything that we're doing, and you know, we, and and we should not forget this fact. Prabhupada says in the in the <laughs> introduction, it's a it's a big part of being Krishna conscious, is understanding that that uh, everything is being recorded. You know that that my activities have their effects, and uh, this law of karma requires it to be a witness who can mete out the good and the bad and so forth. So, um, that, that, uh, but so to accept that there is a higher power, the higher personality, God in the heart, who knows everything and who's trying to guide us in here and there, uh, we, have to, we have to have that faith that he has our best interest at heart. And that comes up again and again. Suridam sarva bhutanam. I'm in the heart of everyone. I'm the surit, the well-wisher of everyone, you see. So then, uh, th then we can, you know, then comes the aspect of surrender. Surrender means you have faith, you surrender to someone, then he'll do good by you, you know, that he has your best interest at heart. So that's, that's what the, the most important aspect to me of the super soul is that we each have, uh, you know, this intimate friend who we've ignored since time immemorial, uh, but he's, a, he's our suridam, surit. Prabhupada would explain that there's different, just like in English, different kinds of friends. In the surit, as Prabhupada would say, you're ever well-wisher. Well, the real, you know, the original ever well-wisher is Krishna in the heart, super so. Uh, the Lord and appears, in, and, and, uh, appears, when he does appear, he appears by his internal energy. That's in the uh, fourth chapter, when Krishna is describing why and when he appears. And then, uh, so he has, of course, those famous verses, yada, yada, hi dharma, seglana, bhavati, parata. But before them, he explains that he, ex that he, he tells uh, Arjun that he explained this science to the sun god millions of years ago. And, uh, but the science appears to be lost, and so now I'm speaking it to you again. You're my friend and, and, and devotee, therefore you can receive this secret knowledge, confidential knowledge. So Arjun, on our behalf, asks, well, how is that possible? I'm your contemporary. You know, and we just were born recently, you know, and this is millions and millions of years ago. You know? And so, so Krishna, in a couple of verses, he explains, yes, bahuni me vati tani janmani tavacharjana, tanya ham veda sarvani, natvam veta parantapa. Many, many births you, both you and I have had in the past. I can remember them all, but you cannot. 
And then the next verse is what Prabhupada is referring to here. A jopi son, obvi yatma, bhutanam yishtaropi son. Prakatim sama dashtaya sambhavam yatma maya. Although I am unborn and my, my transcendental uh, body never deteriorates, millennium after millennium I appear uh, in my original form by my internal energy, uh, atma maya. Now, just uh, I can't can't resist as a little editing pastime, is that this is one of this this had not been in the in the translation. It I probably isn't here because this is kind of an old printing. I mean, relatively speaking, so you won't find it for. Let's see. Here it is. Although I am unborn and my transcendent body never deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all other beings, but no, I, I, it's in this printing. By my internal energy, I still appear in every millennium. That was such an important thing, and Prabhupada mentions it in the purport that I that, that Jai Manish agreed to insert that, although Prabhupada had omitted it. There's another one that I'm that I'm going to advocate for. Janma Karma Divyam, one of the second or third most quoted verses of Prabhupada. So in the Evam Yo Veti Tatvataha. That tattvataha, you know, in truth, uh, if, uh, one, one who knows in truth the divine nature of my birth and activities does not come back again. And, mm-hmm. and so that same phrase appears in uh, the verse, we can chant it together. Manushanam sahasreshu, kaschid yadadi siddhye, yadatam avisiddhanam, kaschid maam, veti tattvataha. Veti tattvata, the same exact phrase. Again in the 18th chapter, bhakti amama vijanati yabanyas chasmi tattvataha. So, uh, because, why is it so important to know him in truth? Because in, in India, everyone knows Krishna. You know, yeah, I know Krishna. He was born in Vindavan. He went to Mathura. He you know, killed Kamsa. He danced with the gopis. I don't have to, you know. <laughs> but that's the point. You don't know in truth. And that won't, that won't take you back to Godhead. That, you know, it has to be understood in the reality of it. So, uh, in the Vedic literature, you find that his whole body is spiritual, so this is the the the, the uh, emphasis in this uh, purport is the uh, difference between the Lord's senses and ours. Just because he he doesn't have senses like us doesn't mean he doesn't have a body with senses and sensations and everything, his spiritual sensations. And how can we know him? Because we have uh, these gross senses. Well, that's the, the verse Prabhupada quotes so again and again: Atakshi Krishna Namadi Nabave Grayam Indriyai. So, uh, uh, what is it? How does it, how does it start again? Atak, Atak Shri Krishna Namadi. With the present senses, mind, condition, I mean, is covered by the material energy, one cannot understand the name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Krishna. But, but by serving him with these very senses, under the guidance of the high authorities, uh, Beginning with the tongue, chanting the name, tasting prasadam, you know, chanting and hearing. Uh, but sevan mukhi jiva ado, ado is beginning. Swayam eva sparatyada, he reveals himself proportionally to the purification uh, of your senses, mind, intelligence. So that's uh, that's how, with our very senses, this is the, this is the the great advantage of the bhakti yogis, is that is we have Krishna on our side. He wants to reveal himself to us. He's just waiting for us to become purified and to develop the, the, the senses. And so we don't have to do any extraordinary uh, austerities like the yogis to do, you know, in order to attain some of the some yogic cities. We're not we're not like the impersonalists trying to merge into the Brahman and performing these kritrena, very difficult to perform austerities. You know, I sometimes say, wouldn't just imagine trying to you know, control the senses and become fixed on the absolute. And you don't have a form, you don't have a name, you don't have anything to do with the senses. It's all just a question of uh, repression, you know. Uh, is it is it even conceivable that you would even, you know, pass through day one with a program like that? <laughs> we need things to do, you know. You want to chant and hear and clean and worship the deities, take prasadam, you know. Senses, senses are constantly engaged, and the mind, you know, of course. But but to try to, to stop all that, you know, which is there in the in the Brahma bodies and even more in the, um, in the Sunya bodies, uh, is just anathema. You know, it's something that is not possible uh, nor desirable. So that's why all of this emphasis on the senses. The Lord has His senses. We have our senses. We can't perceive Him with our present senses. 
But when we purify the senses, then we can see him with uh, purified vision. One of the things I, I, I always come back to is how your knowledge uh, transforms the way you perceive something. You, uh, I, you know, we walk into this room and it's full of the Krishna Leela. You know, you look at that picture, oh yeah, there's Lord Chaitanya dancing and chanting, you know, and it may remind you of a passage in the book, there's, there's Advaita Chari, you know. And someone else walks in, and, well, that's pretty good. It's a nice drawing, you know. I don't know who they are, what they are, what it is. The perception is completely different. Just like a child walks in, you know. Uh, so so n knowledge changes how you, you see anything. And uh, what to speak of, you know, that's why we're supposed, you know, you learn, okay, you know, everything we see is part of Krishna's uh, external energy. It's his energy. Boomer, apa, on alavaya. And then the, the experience we have of these things, like the sun and the moon and the taste of water, though Krishna says, I am that. So, th so the idea is that when you experience these things, which you do to some degree every day, uh, you'll think of Krishna. You know? um, but it only works when you're not trying to exploit those objects of the senses for your own sense gratification. Then your knowledge is covered, just like in the third chapter we were going over last night. Kama covers your knowledge. The more you uh, try to experience that personal sense pleasure, then your, your, your real spiritual knowledge is covered over. So Krishna kindness is an attempt to uh, use everything. What is it, the, the definition of uh, yukta bhairagya? Come on, Balaram. Anasaktasya yadarham upayunjita. Yeah, that's it. Nice. <laughs> So on asaktas, without attachment, vishyan, the object of the senses, yataharam uh, where appropriate, yataharam is an idiom, means where, appro how, where and how appropriate, near uh, bandha krishna sambandha, without getting bound up to the sense objects yourself, bind them up to Krishna, use them in Krishna's service. This is real yukta bhairagya. And and the Id the idea is that in the ultimate stage you you lose all attraction for enjoying those objects yourself, but you become super attracted to engaging whatever you can in Christian service, because that's really where the pleasure comes in, the rasa. If there was no uh, pleasure, then you wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, any comments or questions on this? You look like you're looking for some. No questions? Okay. Then we'll move on. Text 16. Do you have it there? Page 547. Oh, okay. So, you, you're, I, I think you're mentioning about, you're talking about Krishna being the supreme friend. Uh huh. You're mentioning that, but I thought it, you were related to the spiritual master too, or was that? Well, yeah, because this, yes, absolutely. So in relation to that, I mean, I was just thinking that, um, you know, Prabhupada was able to inspire and enthuse people in amazing ways, <laughs> very wonderfully. And in relation to, uh, you know, the Hare Krishna movement continuing and, you know, becoming more and more successful, I mean, it seems that that's, that's obviously necessary for devotees to have faith in their spiritual master in the way um, we had faith the way Prabhupada. Prabhupada's disciples had faith yeah. in him. So what, what, what do you, could, but sometimes it seems that people don't have that faith, you know, yeah. and it almost seems like it's, it's fanatical, like yeah, like he's saying it's fanatical that some people may think that or like, or just the nature of the, there, there might be so many different opinions about a particular guru in the society, and some of them are just like unfavorable opinions. Mm -hmm. Whereas in whereas in Prabhupada's times, it was just okay. Prabhupada, he's the you know he's the charya, and everybody you know jump on board and follow him. There's no question about it. So yeah. nowadays, it's kind of like okay, well, it's a difficult question. <laughs> Maybe you could comment. <laughs> The, the, the principle is, is it's like a law, it's like a natural law, you know. In other words, where do we, where do we uh, find our inspiration, our enthusiasm for continuing the process on a personal level? 
as well as on the level of the of the organization, the society, to work together to, you know, preach and, and expand. And, you know, the, the effort uh, needs to be made and has been made extensively and still is to, to still see Prabhupada as the fount of inspiration, study his books. This is one of the reasons, I think, you know, besides you know, Prabhupada's desire to get together, to have courses, you know, and have like a you know retreat. We call it a retreat, but like going to Mayapur, you know, forget about this. What's going on now is kind of interrupting things. But uh, and and intensively study that and f and and feel Prabhupada's, you know, inspiration even today. And then you go back and and you're fired up. You have more knowledge. You're, you're more confident. You know, and you get inspiration. But it only works when there's unity amongst the uh, uh, leaders in in uh, backing that you know enterprise that their disciples will be will become uh, uh, learned in the shastra and those to preach and make new devotees and open up temples you know now obviously every everybody is an individual and that includes the present leadership and so they'll have different uh, strength. No, you know, no one can can match to the Prabhupada. Prabhupada was was uh, obviously one in a million, if not more. You know, a special uh, Sena Pati Bhakta, you know, which is this phrase, uh, I forget who wrote that. You may, may remember, but it's it's one of our literatures. Sena Pati Bhakta, oh, it's, I think, uh, Chaitanya Mangal, uh, who's the commander-in-chief, you know, empowered. So, the best that, that we can hope for and that we can strive for is that we'll see an aspect of Srila Prabhupada's, you know, uh, empowerment in our own spiritual master and that we'll be enlivened to uh, uh, pass on what we've been giving, you know, be thankful uh, for the, uh, the um, gifts that we've been given and to give them to others. So it's, it's not a... Uh, it's not any, uh, you know, any hard and fast formula. Like, just like every day, we have to do our sadhana to maintain our you know, self on the path back to God. If we don't do it one day, then there's an effect. You, know, you get confused, you get your enthusiasm, you, you're more likely to snap at somebody. So similarly, the, the movement itself, the leadership as well as the followership, followership needs to uh, renew the, the, the commitment to uh, follow in, you know, Srila Prabhupada's uh, line as, as closely as possible. Um, you know, I mean, I did my, you know, I'm, I'm kind of coming to the end of my service. <laughs> uh, at least my, you know, editing service. Uh, I mean, who knows, year, it'd be maybe years still, but it's obviously most of it's behind me. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I didn't do any great service, but at least I try to get to keep these books going out, you know, <laughs> and uh, make sure that they say what they they're, they're supposed to say, uh, and uh, you know, trying to serve Prabhupada as best I could. So, you know, it's this is an ongoing question that needs to be to be um, answered, asked, and answered, and and and, and repeatedly, you know, to, in order for us to stay on the straight and narrow and following Prabhupada's mood and mission. At the same time, using innovation, you know, they have to, that there's a balance here. What's the principle? What's what's a, uh, 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 what, what is the other thing? Huh? Detail. With detail. Yeah, the details can change, but the principles have to go on. And I think we should go on. So let's try text 16, did we do? No, we haven't done that one. Bahirantashta Bhutanam. Acharam charam evacha Sukshmat vata da bigayam Durastam chanti ke chatat The supreme truth exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and the non moving. Because he is subtle, he is beyond the power of the material senses to see or to know. Although far, far away, he is also near to all. Purport. In Vedic literature, we understand that Narayan, the Supreme Person, is residing both outside and inside of every living entity. He is present in both the spiritual and material worlds. Although he is far, far away, still he is near to us. These are the statements of Vedic literature. 
And of course, it's Upanishadic, so we're getting an Upanishadic quote. Asino duram rajati shayano yati sarvata kadu Upanishad 1 to 21. And because he is always engaged in transcendental bliss, we cannot understand how he is enjoying his full opulence. We cannot see or understand with these material senses. Therefore, in the Vedic language, it is said that to understand him, our material mind and senses cannot act. But one who has purified his mind and senses by practicing Krishna consciousness in devotional service can see him constantly. It is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita that the devotee who has developed love for the Supreme God can see him always, without cessation. And it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 11.54, that he can be seen and understood only by devotional service. Bhaktiya, Tunandiya, Shakya. All right. What's that Brahma Samhita quote? You don't know. Balaram? How does one see the Lord always in his heart? You know it. Premanjana. Premanjana, Chudita, Bhakti, Balochanena, Sandak, Sadaya, Bhadadi, Yesha, Baloga, Yandi. Yang Shyama, Sunda, Dama, Chindukana, Swarupam, Govinda, Mahari, Purusham, Dama, Text 17. Avibhaktam chabhuteshu vibhaktam vivachastitam bhuta bhatra tadchatadgeyam grasishnu prabhavishnu cha. Although the super soul appears to be divided among all beings, he is never divided. He is situated as one. Although he is the maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. Purport. The Lord is situated in everyone's heart as the super soul. Does this mean that he has become divided? No, actually he is one. The example is given of the sun. The sun at the meridian is situated in its place. But if one goes for 5,000 miles in all directions and asks, where is the sun? Everyone will say that it is shining on his head. In the Vedic literature, this example is given to show that although he is undivided, he is situated as if divided. Also, it is said in the Vedic literature that one Vishnu is present everywhere by his omnipotence, just as the sun appears in many places to many persons. And the Supreme Lord, although the maintainer of every living entity, devours everything at the time of annihilation. This was confirmed in the 11th chapter when the Lord said that he had come to devour all the warriors assembled at Kurukshetra. He also mentioned that in the form of time he devours also. He is the annihilator, the killer of all. When there is creation, he develops all from their original state, and at the time of annihilation, he devours them. The Vedic hymns confirm the fact that he is the origin of all living entities and the rest of all. After creation, everything rests in his omnipotence, and after annihilation, everything again returns to rest within him. These are the confirmations of Vedic hymns. Yato vahimani bhutani jayante yena jatani jivanti yat prayant abhisang vishanti tad brahma tadn vijigyasasva Taitari Upanishad 3.1 So he devours and develops all. And uh, what was I going to mention? Origin of all living and the rest of all. Uh, Prabhupada also o often gave this example of how, it, as I mentioned here, he seems to be divided, but he's not divided. Oh, yeah. There's one passage I remember reading how when devotees interact with each other, the 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 proper way of, of, of acting, just like when we were ch chanting together or reading together, we're actually relating to each other through the super soul. In other words, when we're glorifying Krishna together, uh, there's, a, there's a certain bond that develops. You feel, you know, there's a, there's a unity there. And that's because uh, each of us is, is connecting with each other through the medium of the, of the super soul, through the, the, the intimate, you know, heart. And so, and what's wonderful is that, that, is that even though there's unlimited super souls, unlimited living entities, uh, we can each have our own personal relationship with him, with with, with Krishna. In fact, I once I once read that the uh, Gididi worship, there's actually a a, a a worship of the super soul that's going on there, 
I think this is mentioned by Jeeva Goswami in one of his Sandarbhas. And uh, so, so the, the super soul generally we don't think of as, uh, as, as much as we think of you know, the form of Krishna on the altar and so forth and in Vrindavan. But uh, this is the way that uh, he is, Krishna is guiding us. You know, if we actually want to come to him, he gets so much inspiration and guidance from the super soul act this way. He says that right in the uh, tenth chapter, right? Teisham satadi yukta anam bhajatam priti purvakam dadhami buddhi yogam kam yena mamapiyanti te. That to those who are always who are devoted to serving me with love, uh, always I give the knowledge which they can come to me. And the next verse, teisham eva na kampartam ahama jnana jamtamha nashi yam yatma bhava sto jnana di pena bhastata. This is even more direct reference to super soul. Uh, out of my compassion for them, I destroy the darkness of uh, ignorance in their heart with a shining lamp of knowledge. Well, that's the super soul. So, when we when we become uh, really eager to to hear this knowledge, to learn it, to memorize it, to share it, uh, be, you know, that's that's a sign of uh, advancement. That's very auspicious, and we should try to cultivate that. You know, that that uh, desire to hear. Uh, that's Krishna really cleansing from within. You know, we have that verse, Srinvatam Sakata Krishna Punisha Vanakirtana. So that that uh that's the greed, you know, where it says greed is greed is good. Well that greed is, is really good. Where we can't get enough. You know, like you read about someone picked up the Bhagavad Gita for the first time, they couldn't put it down. We just had someone, you know, I read it all, you know, in three days I read the whole thing. Because finally this is it means previous lives <laughs> coming to that point and, Finally, uh, feeling the, and this is the truth. <sighs> Where did that come up recently? No, well, I mean, I know one story with uh, Keshe Prabhupada. You know, he was searching, 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 and finally came on Prabhupada's Gita, and he said, "This is it." You know, and he read it in like three days, stayed up all night. You know, and everything. Whereas other people, they say, well, yeah, this is not for me, right? <laughs> but uh, obviously we have assets from previous life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all done all-nighters, but very few have done all-nighters reading Prabhupada's books. <laughs> all right, I wanted to start something new tonight, and that is a little poetry reading. I brought my poetry instead of trying to dredge my memory. So we'll begin uh, Monday on text 18. And uh, there's a few, uh, there's a couple of uh, poems about Prabhupada that I did. One of them actually is a, you've probably heard all these before. I don't know if you've heard them both. But there's one who's written, uh, Kusha Krater, he was amazing. He wrote original Sanskrit poems. And this one was either 76, 77 uh, for the Vyasa Puja book that was included. I'll just give you a taste of the uh, Sanskrit. It's the same meter as the samsara prayers. It can be sung to the same meter. Shri Srinavadvipa Parapradipa Sandipya Mana Satato Bhuviha Chaitasta Mohanti Yasya Yatnam Tamkirti Yamak Pramupada Devam The transcendental lamp of Navadvip, Garanga Dev. He took with great endeavor round the world the souls to save who long had dwelt in darkness, never chanting Krishna's name. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. Uh, the sacred treasure left by Vyas and other learned saints he rendered into English, free of speculation's taints. And thus he mercifully fulfilled Sri Saraswati's aim. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. The brilliant sun of Lord Govinda's form is shining bright throughout this world because of his sharp logic's awesome might. That sun makes all the Mayavadi glowworms hide in shame. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. The pristine Ganges of the Bhagavat flows everywhere because of his great effort. In that stream, the sages' prayers are gems and Krishna's pastimes are swans sporting unrestrained. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. Uh, ensuring that his mission's victory would be complete. He planted Shri Shri Radha Krishna's charming lotus feet in temples by the dozen and in countless hearts unchained. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. 
the fierce and formidable army led by wicked Kali, is being slain by arrow showers, volley upon volley. Those arrows are his all auspicious books of spotless fame. The vast redoubt of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. The Hare Krishna movement's a desire tree, whose fruits are all the splendid ways Lord Gore's army wins recruits. To plant that tree upon this earth, from Krishna's realm he came. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. An ocean of compassion he has taken shelter of, Sri Nanda's son with all his being and everlasting love. He lives on by his words, whose followers with him remain. The vast renown of Srila Prabhupada I now proclaim. So then I added an eighth verse. I pray that those who read this hymn, which shines the brilliant light of Srila Prabhupada's renown in Kali Yuga's night, will soon attain firm faith in his instructions so that they may one day join him in Golok and there with Krishna stay. Hare Krishna. Kusha Krata. Mm, you know, I'm not sure. It has something to do with the Kusha grass and sacrifices. I think it's a personality who was involved in a lot of sacrifices with Kusha grass or something like that. Yes, yes. Bhakta uh, Peter, who was a real nudge. You know, he wouldn't live in the ashram. He was sleeping under the stairs. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy Peter. He's actually institutionalized for a while. Oh. When, he, when he was in uh, the University of Buffalo, he came out of this crew out of Buffalo. You know, so many devotees came out of there. And uh, so, you know, he went a little off, you know. Uh, was it him who crawled up to the Vyasa San? I think so. You know, probably was, or probably was giving a class, and he crawled up there. So anyway, they uh, <laughs> so they put him in a room, and, and Rupanuga, he went to the hospital, whatever it was, and said, you know, he really does much better when he hears this uh, song that we have. Well, he was he wasn't initi he wasn't initiated. Yeah, he was coming becoming a And uh, so they had they were no, no Buffalo. I don't think there was a temple in Buffalo at that time. Maybe they. Said, yeah, he came from Buffalo down to Boston. He actually joined in Boston. But he was part of the group, uh, that class, you know. That. So they played that, uh, the Hare Krishna mantra, you know, which I think the only, all they had at that point was that Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know, the Krishna uh, album. And uh, he calmed down, you know, and he got out. <laughs> he became Bhakti Peter and became Krishna I knew him very well, you know. I, I lived with him, basically. I mean, in the same in the corner there, in the BBT. And uh, I was getting into, you know, the CC. When the CC came out, it was a whole, like, new treasure trove of far out shlokas, you know. And I was getting into this shloka, that shloka. And uh, he told me, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to start translating the, the uh, works of the Goswamis, Rupa Goswami. Because what happened was, you know, he, he taught himself Sanskrit, but then he wanted to practice and translate. The word money thing is, you know, Prabhupada's books were done. It was the late 77. And uh, he joined the department there, but gradually they left one by one, and it was just him. And so uh, I guess it was 78, because I stayed there until October 78 in L.A. So he had sent away for the Vedas to for, for India. You know, but it was, you know, sent away, and then it was coming by ship. You know, it was taking so long, he didn't want to wait. So there's this one book that all the Sanskrit guys had, and it was published by the Gaudiya Mat, and it had a lot of the works of the Goswamis, just in the Devanagari, very compact. You can get a lot in, you know. So the whole Stavamala was there, Stavabali was there. So he took that, he started translating one of the, one of the uh, works of the, uh, uh, from the Stavamala, because it's an anthology, you know. The Mukunda Muktabali. So he would do one or two verses and Xerox it, you know, and then he said, Oh, this is great, you know. Navajaladabarnam, Champakot Basikarnam, because it's the Nas, these are the verses. And so I would encourage him to keep going, keep going, you know. So he eventually finished the whole thing and, and just after he finished the entire Stavamala, you know, there's no computers, there's no discs or anything. Everything was by uh, Xerox copy, you know. He, I bound it up. I kept it in a little suitcase, and that was, I, that was one of the things I took with me to Atlanta when I left. And that's when I started chanting. They loaned me a tambura, and I was chanting, chanting, chanting. And then I made some tapes. But he was an amazing genius, you know. He was kind of a uh, Abaduda type, you know. He came down here at one point, before, all before I even knew him. And they, he was doing book distribution, so-called. You know, he would go out and he would just, in his t-shirt, you know, kind of a loose t-shirt. <laughs> 
not t-shirt, uh, yeah, sweatshirt. And he would just hold the books out, you know, hold it out. <laughs> Didn't do so big. I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, his, but then he, for 20 years straight, that's all he did was translate. I've got, this, I've got a couple, uh, maybe more, more than a hundred of his little books on my shelf. You can ever come over there. You know, the whole uh, Tattva Siddharva. He didn't do all the Siddharvas. He did the Tattva Siddharva. The, 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 um, what did he, you know, he did the Pajabali, which is in the nice. These are some of the early ones. You know. Okay, so it's about time. Just one more little one and then we'll adjourn for cure time. Tomorrow, or Monday, I'll do another one. Okay, so this is the prayer to become a miser. We're not supposed to be misers, but this is a miser's prayer. You heard this before. Yeah. Vichayani, Vicharyani, Vichinjani, Punok Punaha, Kripanasya, Dana, Kripanasya, Dananiva, Tvandamani, Babantana. The miser uh, compelled to constantly collect and contemplate, uh, yeah, com compelled to constantly collect, yeah, compelled and constantly collect and contemplate his hoard. No. Compelled to constantly co uh, co collect and count his precious hoard, the miser contemplates his wealth with avaricious aims. Please bless me to become a miser who is compelled, O Lord, to constantly collect and count and contemplate your names. All glory to Srila Prabhupada.